Meanwhile, uh, just uh, during this warm-up period, could you describe if, for example, the woman leaving there in the back were to instead go to the event horizon of a black hole and fall in, what would happen to her? That would be bad. <laughs> uh, you can calculate how this will work. It turns out you might not have known that as you, stand, as you sit there, as you stand, uh, your feet are closer to the center of the Earth than the top of your head is. Of course, that's obvious. <laughs> but what we don't carry with us as a general bit of information is the fact that Earth's gravity is pulling more strongly on your feet for being closer to the center of the Earth than it is pulling on your head. It's not enough to notice, so we don't live with that awareness. But in the vicinity of a black hole, if you do a feet-first dive, it turns out that your feet can be materially closer to the center of the black hole compared with where your head is. In other words, on Earth, if you're five and a half feet tall, Earth is 8,000 miles across. So that difference is, is it's nothing. But suppose the center of the Earth were like right here. And the distance to the center was, your height was large compared with the center, the distance to the center of the Earth. Then you start feeling this difference in gravity. By the way, that's called the tidal force. And that's what stretches the waters on Earth, okay? That's why you have tidal bulges on the Earth. So that can happen to you. So you're falling down, let's, take, let's just say it's a feet first dive. And as you descend, the difference in gravity between your feet and your head begins to grow. And it first kind of feels good. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Stretch. You want that to happen. Then you realize that the act of stretching is unrelenting, okay? <laughs> And what begins to take place would be the envy of the Spanish Inquisition, okay? <laughs> because you just continue to stretch, and you can calculate the stretch point where the difference in gravity exceeds the molecular bonds that hold your flesh together. Mm. And so there will be a point where your body snaps into two pieces you will likely break at the base of your spine in that first of your bifurcations. Then those two pieces, as they descend, will feel the same thing your whole body felt a moment earlier. And then they snap into two pieces. So go from one to two to four to eight to 16. And then you break up into a myriad of pieces as you descend to the center. And, and that's not even the worst of it. <laughs> because what's also happening is the fabric of space and time, as described by general relativity, general relativity, gravity is not so much a force, but the shape of space-time. The shape of space-time funnels you from what was once a wide area down to a narrow area. So that in fact, while you're stretching, you're being extruded through the fabric of space. Like, like toothpaste through a tube. And in fact, the product, there's a word for that. We have a word for how you die falling into a black hole. It's called spaghettification. <laughs> <laughs> and the, so the title chapter of Death by Black Hole, the title cha the chapter's called, in there is a chapter called Death by Black Hole. And it's much broader than that because Black holes wreak havoc on their environments. They're, they're scary things, because they can eat you. Mm -hmm. And humans tend to be scared of things that can eat them. That's why kids love T-Rex more than they love the Brachiosaurus, which just chews on, on leaves, okay? They like T-Rex because it can eat a kid, the way a black hole can eat an adult. So uh, there's a whole section there on ways the universe turns bad. And so that's what, so it's an introduction to that not being the only way you can die in the cosmos. Well, now you know. <laughs> <laughs>